So many of you will be familiar with bus locking already. There's a number of um, proprietary or standardised bus locking mechanisms around. And really the only reason that bus locking wasn't explicitly included in the TLM standard is that there was, there is more than one um, bus locking mechanism in common use and the TLM working group didn't feel it was their job to select one particular mechanism. So with bus locking, an initiator would add some sort of attribute, a lock, to a transaction. In TLM2 world, that transaction would be intercepted by interconnect components and targets, and the lock attribute can be used to actually um, lock that bus such that further other initiators can't use the bus until it's been unlocked again. So the initiator adds a lock attribute to the transaction. The interconnect then locks the bus at that given address, so the particular address can be locked. And any attempt to access a locked address would give an error response, and that can be implemented using the response status in TLM2. Then the same initiator that locked the interconnect can unlock it with a new transaction and a different value for the attribute. And the lock could be anonymous or it could be tagged. In other words, a lock can actually have a value associated with it such that only the same initiator that created the lock can unlock the bus, or the lock can be totally anonymous so that anyone can unlock the bus. bus. Well, in the particular implementation that, that I tried, it was the interconnect component that was actually implementing that bus locking. And the neat thing about that implementation technique is that the target can be a straightforward um, base protocol target that need know nothing about the locking mechanism. So the interconnect intercepts the extension, implements the locking, and then, where appropriate, forwards the transaction onto the target. And a very simple bus locking mechanism like this can be used to implement a read, modify, write operation, which is one of its commonest applications. And cut a long story short, it is indeed very, very straightforward to implement using TLM2 extensions. 